Hi, uh, I'm Jeffrey Warren. Uh, um, I uh, founded this organization, a kind of a loose affiliation of mapping activists around the world called Grassroots Mapping. And kind of like UN Spider and other organizations here, we look at uh, access to satellite imagery. But uh, our means of uh, approaching that problem is to build our own really inexpensive satellites, or rather, imaging platforms that use kites and balloons. So you just take a, a kite or a, a balloon and you attach a camera to the string and uh, you can take pictures uh, from up to 4,500 feet in the air. Uh, we've tried going further, but you tend to lose the, lose the kite or the balloon if you go too high. Um, <laughs> and uh, like I said, uh, we're not, you know, typically we don't represent organizations, uh, I mean um, governments or large uh, NGOs, but uh, I've worked with a lot of local organizations like the Louisiana Bucket Brigade out of New Orleans. Uh, with whom I've been working on a, a citizen mapping of the oil spill. So we'll go out to coastal areas, to beaches, places we can get to, and we'll you know, launch our equipment. The entire kit costs less than $150. It's a cheap digital camera. You can get a 10 megapixel camera for about 50 bucks now. Um, we build our own balloons often. We use weather balloons, things like that. Go to Home Depot. And, uh, but the imagery we're collecting is actually extremely good. Um, it's, uh, a lot of the data sets we're bringing back are three centimeter, two centimeter per pixel, which is about an order of magnitude better than almost anything else out there. Um, this is, uh, for example, one photograph from a balloon, and you can see uh, a lot of vegetation here. Some of the imagery is good enough resolution, you can see individual animals, birds, schools of fish. Uh, the color is extremely good, so we're looking at some spectral analysis. But of course, photos are not maps, so part of the process here is to stitch the photos into orthorectified maps. Um, We've been working a lot with uh, Gonzo Earth, Stuart Long, who was at the Camp Roberts exercises. Uh, and we use things like the open source GDAL uh, toolkit. But we've also developed an online tool called the Cardigan Knitter that allows anyone to do it with just a modern web browser. Uh, you upload your pictures directly to the site, you stretch them onto a base map, and you get images like this. Uh, this is about a mile long uh, stretch of uh, Grand Isle Terre in Louisiana. Excuse me, Louisiana. This is an image of the Chandler Islands. Uh, you can see kind of large swaths of oil that are moving westward. Uh, you can see also that the underlying data, this is, I think, uh, it might be USGS or something, but it's from Google, uh, Google Maps, is uh, different because, of course, the sands shift and things change over time, but our maps are extremely up to date. A lot of times, our maps are so good. These are birds, uh, I think these are terns and, and pelicans on a sandbar with oil deposited there that there's almost no underlying data you can compare it to because it's, it's much higher resolution. Um, we've also done really long maps where you actually just attach a kite to the back of a boat and you kind of uh, sail up the coast, right? So you can get, this is several miles of coastline. We're uh, releasing all the data for this project, for the Gulf Oil Project into the public domain, so you can download it here in GeoTIFF, TMS, a variety of other formats. Uh, and uh, I, another kind of project I'll, I'll talk about, um, Oh, so basically, one of the major things we try to do is encourage people to pick up the tools themselves and make their own maps, right? Because you might have a different opinion than other agencies who have maps, or you might, uh, be, you might need data that doesn't exist. So this is a, actually a, a calendar of trips that were taken over this summer by Louisiana Bucket Brigade to gather uh, data. And we've done some assessments on, you know, for example, the number of trips that come back with a successful data set that is uh, good enough data to produce a map. So we've had pretty good success there and also the number of mappers who go on a, a certain number of trips. So you can see that a lot of people go on, like 30, 30 or so people went on one trip, and then we have kind of a core group of uh, participants who go over and over and, and, and really build up expertise. Um, part of this, of course, is good instructional materials. Uh, we've produced illustrated guides, all kinds of things, um, so that people can learn how to do it. And this summer, I was saying, uh, I got an opportunity to work with the uh, Jumpstart International Organization in Georgia, the country, Georgia. Um, and we tried to really scale it to see the limits of what we could do. These flights are 4,500 feet in the air in the, kind of the mountain city of Mestia in the north of Georgia, near the Russian border. And we worked with a lot of youth groups. Uh, they had uh, Open Maps Caucasus as their local organization. They have a lot of good uh, relationships with, with educators. This is us with a group reeling in uh, you know, almost a mile of a line, which you can imagine if you do it by hand, takes hours. So we use a flip a bicycle over and you can kind of use the rear wheel of the bicycle to, to, to pull in the line. Um, and this is uh, the resulting map. The color's not so good on the projector here, but we produced a map that was five and a half kilometers long by about a kilometer wide of an entire city at about 20 centimeters uh, per pixel. 
Um, these are some of the organizations who have supported the work um, I've been doing. And yeah, thanks very much. I'd love to talk to you about what we can do.